think it's the children's kids' zone party. So it's party time. It's nearly at Christmas. Nearly there. Look at those presents wrapped. Exciting time. Let's open in prayer. Father, I thank you, Lord, that we can gather around your word and we can understand a deeper depth of you in our lives. Open up our ears and our hearts to hear in Jesus' name. Amen. So as I was saying, we were looking at how secure our salvation is. Can I lose it if I've received it? And we came to the conclusion that once you've received your salvation, that's it. You're his. And he's not going to let you go. He's not going to forsake you. And there's nothing you can do that will take that away. There is a point in time where you get saved and born again and you belong to God. A period, and that doesn't change. So throughout the rest of your life, you can either have hell on earth by living for yourself, or you can have heaven on earth by living for God. And God teaches us, and we learn obedience. And there are rewards that happen in heaven. So I want to look at some of those rewards. And there are many places and many authors of the Bible, Luke, John, Matthew, talk about um, rewards. And rewards have nothing to do with favoritism. Now, I know I'm God's favorite. We're all God's favorites. But rewards are based on faith and love. And there are two categories of rewards. There are rewards that you receive in this life and there are rewards you'll receive in the next life. So Hebrews 11.6 says this, and without faith it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and he rewards those who earnestly seek him. So if you earnestly seek God, you will receive a reward from God. But you've got to seek him. If you don't seek him, no reward. And the thing is, people chase after many things in the world. They chase after power, fame, riches, but that has very little value in the kingdom or in the life of a human being. But God says we can receive spiritual rewards provided we do it his way. 2 Timothy 2, 4-5 says, No one serving as a soldier gets entangled in civilian affairs, but rather tries to please his commanding officer. Similarly, Anyone who competes as an athlete does not receive the victor's crown except by competing according to the rules. So the rewards of faith, because that's the only way you can please God, can only be received or achieved by doing it his way. We all like to do things our way, but God wants us to do it his way. And the thing about his way is he says that every good work will be tested by fire. And if it's of God, it remains. If it's of you, it kind of is a bit embarrassing. 1 Corinthians 3, 12 to 13 says, If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay or straw, their work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring, to, bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. So, can you imagine doing stuff, 
but it's made of hay, and then you straw, and then it goes into the fire. There's nothing when it comes out the other side. So what is this fire like? I hope we haven't got too many Bible school students here, because you'll, look, you'll see why. When I was in Bible school, early, in my early years of, of faith, I was sitting one of the exams. It was these multiple choice exams, and I rattled through the questions, flew through them, finished in record time, and I'm sitting there frustrated, waiting for people to finish. I want to get on, you know, do something. And I kind of, my eyes were looking around the room, and then I found myself just looking at my neighbor's paper. And I was mentally just ticking off, he's got that one wrong, he's got that one right, he's got that one right, as one does, you know. I know none of my Bible school students would ever dream of looking at someone's paper. I know. And this guy next to me had got one answer wrong that I had got right. And I read the question, and I thought, ah, oh, he's right, I've got it wrong. So I did the honourable thing, I changed my paper. And, you know, I kind of get that little probing from the Holy Spirit saying, you know, and I kind of said, you know, what I like about the humans is that we justify things. So God sort of reminded me, and I'm saying, actually, Lord, I did know the answer, so it's okay. Big okay. The Lord's teaching me at this time integrity in my walk with him. Because I said, you have to learn obedience. Anyhow, as that happened, paper went through, got a really good mark, very happy. And I forgot all about that, all about that. Speed forward to graduation. And I remember the Bible school student, the Bible court school, um, what do you call it, the teacher stood up, the dean of the Bible school. And he said, this year we had two exceptional students and they both got the same mark and it was a tie. And they named the guy that I'd actually seen his and changed my answer from. And then they called out my name. And all of a sudden, that feeling of joy and honor and greatness, suddenly I just was reminded that the difference between us was something like, well, we were 0.09% tie. And if I'd got that question wrong, I should have come second and he should have come first. And all of a sudden, what should have been a joyous occasion suddenly became a real, oh. And I thought, what should I do? Should I, should I just be honest? Should I just stand up? Should I do the honorable thing and say, actually, I, I came second? So I prayed, I thought about it, I thought, yep, yeah, you must do the honorable thing. So I stood up. I accepted the prize, <laughs> I shook the hand, I took the applause, and I sat down again. And this little voice said, remember that you said it didn't really matter? It all matters. And the Lord was just teaching me what the fire is like. You know, when we try and stand on straw, it gets tested. And when it gets tested, it finds what it's like. Will it burn? Or will it be refined as gold and come out purer? So there's a little confession for you there. So, can you imagine getting to heaven and all your works being straw? You know, I remember that feeling, sitting down after with this reward in my hand, something I didn't really deserve. And there was this great big sinking feeling. There was no joy, there was no pleasure in that. I didn't stay there long. I used John 1, 1 John 1, 9. If you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you. And then I moved on from there very quickly. And I finally confessed it today <laughs> to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> 
Now I'm justified. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but it is amazing how we justify ourselves and how we need that fire and how we grow through it. Paul says this. I'm going to read from the J.B. Phillips translation. Do you remember how on a racing track every competitor runs but only one wins the prize? Well, you ought to run with your minds fixed on winning the prize. Every competitor in athletic events goes into serious training. Athletes will take tremendous pains for a fading crown of leaves. But our contest is for an eternal crown that will never fade. I run the race then with determination. I am no shadow boxer. I really fight. I am my body's sternest master for fear that when I've preached to others, I should myself be disqualified. What would I be disqualified from? Winning the race and receiving the rewards. My salvation saved. That's settled. But the rewards are up for grabs. And I need to run in such a way, and we all need to run in such a way that we win the prize. And we do that by doing it his way. Paul had learned integrity. He'd learned through the lessons in life of growing and maturing as a Christian, how important it is to be a doer of the word, to do what you say. And he wasn't prepared to disqualify himself. Because you see, in heaven, there are two seats of judgment. And it doesn't matter whether you believe or not, you'll face those seats. One is in, from Revelations, which is the judgment seat. That is where you will be judged by the law. And it's a very scary, frightening place. And if you break one law, you break them all. So no one is safe in that place. The other seat is, uh, is in 2 Corinthians 5.10. It says, we, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each one of us may receive what is due to us for the things done whilst in the body, whether good or bad. So this seat of Christ is called in Greek as the Bema seat. And it was typically, um, when, we, when I go canoeing and we race, we have these palodiums which we step up and stand and the, the highest palodium is who comes first and you have second and third. It's same in the Olympic Games. So it's a, a place of rewards for what you've done in faith. What you believed God for. What you received from God. And there are rewards. It talks about eternal crowns. What are these eternal crowns? Well I think Imagine someone's blind. Explain to them color. It would be extraordinarily difficult to explain to someone who is blind color. Because it's just, where do you start? It is extraordinarily difficult for God to describe to us what heaven is like. Because we are actually a shadow, which is just black and white. Heaven is multiple is on another dimension. We can't even imagine how glorious and wonderful heaven is. And the nearest God can say to it, perhaps is like receiving crowns of honor, and you will be rewarded, and not everybody will be rewarded the same. So there will be different levels of reward in heaven, because God is a just, fair God. Do nothing, receive nothing. Bury your treasure, and it will be removed from you by the fire. How sad it must be for those who get up, they stand on the lectern, and there's nothing there. Well, you copy that question down. I can't give you first. I can't give you a prize for doing that. because you, it's, It wasn't my way of doing things. It was your way of doing things. 
I can't give you a reward. It's gone. How embarrassing would that be to be the least in the kingdom of heaven? Okay, you're in the kingdom of heaven. But I don't want to be least in the kingdom of heaven. I want to have something to shout, to offer the Lord, not to go. It's like going around someone's house and they've cooked a fabulous meal and everyone's bringing them presents and you haven't got one. You kind of think, oh, I wish I had something. I feel a bit embarrassed. So we must ask ourselves, are what we're doing, are we doing wholeheartedly for God? Or am I expecting to be thanked by everybody around me? The real rewards are being led by the Holy Spirit, by walking, well, doing what he says. I mean, I was just thinking the other night, have you ever laid awake at night, not been able to sleep, because you blessed somebody, or you gave a big donation to the church, or you reached in your pocket and blessed somebody on the street. Have you ever laid awake at night thinking, I shouldn't have done that, oh, I wish I hadn't done that. I'm, oh. You might have regretted it perhaps as you were doing it with the old quiver in the liver, but when you'd done it, there was expressible joy and happiness and gladness because you see, love, gives. Fear withholds. But how many times have you been in situations where you can bless somebody and be a blessing or give something and you withheld? I can't afford it. I withheld. And how many times did you stay awake all night thinking, I should have, I should have helped that person. I should have blessed. It was in my power to do so and I didn't. You see, when we're walking by love, love gives. Love gives. You see, when we walk by faith, it pleases God, who lives in the inside us. And if he's pleased, he releases that joy. The Holy Spirit's joy comes upon you. Anything that is not of faith, is of doubt. Listen to this. Uh, Romans, I'm going to read it from the Amplified, 1424. But the man who has doubts, misgivings, or une an uneasy conscience, he's talking about, about eating, and then eats, perhaps because of you, stands condemned before God because he is not true to his convictions and he does not act from faith. For whatever does not originate and proceed from faith is sin. Whatever is done without a conviction of its approval by God is sinful. So we want to just, is it okay for me to go here? Yes. Now some people have an anointing to go places that perhaps you don't. And that's okay. That's okay. They've got the anointing to do so. And they do it in faith. If you went there to that place or did that thing, that would be an act of doubt. And it could cause you problems. So what God is saying is if it's not of faith, don't do it. If your conscience is saying no, then don't go there. Don't look at the person's paper next to you, Bible students. Don't do it. It costs me. It costs me. So when you do those sort of things, your world gets smaller and smaller. And you get smaller. And sleepless nights. And you lose something. You compromise. And one of the things about walking with God is he wants to build your character. He's always working on your character. Trying to get you to step up to another level. Listen to your conscience. Do what the Bible says. And it makes you strong in character. Getting up in the morning, coming to church, braving minus three degrees. Being here today. Character. And it makes you stronger and helps you to resist those things that pull you down and say no. 
character is something that's really important. Christmas is coming. Acts 20, 35. This is what Jesus said. It is more blessed to give than receive. When you are giving, you're loving. Love gives. So we must run our race in such a way to win the rewards the right way because it's going to be tested by fire and one of the best ways of winning the rewards is running with love, with a true heart and a, in line with your conscience doing what God says. And the real secret of Christmas and enjoying Christmas is be concerned about others. Be concerned about other people's happiness. Because if you're more concerned about everybody else's happiness, there's no time to look at yourself and say, am I happy or not? Because you're too busy concerned about everybody else being happy. And in the process, you will be giving. And when you give, you will receive that inexpressible joy. So this Christmas, what are you sowing? Remember, love gives, fear holds. It withholds blessings, it withholds love. But here's some good news. We are not people that withhold because we are creatures of love. And 1 John 4.18 said, there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. So what stops you giving? A fear of lack. What stops you loving? A fear of rejection. What stops your faith in its tracks? A fear of doubt. I don't know if God's going to show up. I don't know, I'm not sure, I'm uncertain. But when you walk in love, there's no fear of lack because someone else's needs is always more important than your needs. When you talk about loving, Jesus was rejected. If he can be rejected, I can, but I'm going to do it anyhow. I'm going to love unconditionally like Jesus. When I really not sure about doubt. I think, what does his word say? I overcome doubt by using his word. I face the fear and I do it anyway. And the rewards in this life are amazing. The Christian way of living is incredibly Brilliant. There is nothing like it. There's no other philosophy like it. It's the way of love. It's what everybody really wants. It's character. It's discovering who you are and being the person you've always wanted to be because God is living inside you. It's living in that place of joy. You, you see, no person can meet your needs. No, no husband, no wife can meet all your needs. No friendship can meet your needs. Only the love of God can meet every need that you have. And only you can then touch others once you've received that love of God. And the rewards, whatever you sow, you reap. And that works even if you don't believe. If you sow, you will reap. If you give lots of presents, you will receive lots of presents. If you give lots of compliments, people will return those compliments to you. I've seen that so many times. People giving compliments continually, and then all of a sudden they start coming back. Encouragement, start encouraging others, and people can encourage you. It all comes back. It's simply the law of sowing and reaping, which is based on love. But there's a negative side too, that it works in reverse. Don't sow, don't reap. And it all comes back and you feel isolated. But none of us are there. We're racing a race that we're going to get to the end. 
we're going to be standing on the platform and the fire's going to come. And when it's gone, we'll have gold, silver, diamonds and precious stones all around us. And we'll say to Jesus, but he, we didn't feed you. I don't remember feeding you. I don't remember helping you. I don't remember giving you a glass of water when you were thirsty. And he will remind us that we did. All the things that, did I really do all those things? You did. Through me, in faith, you did. And you've been refined. And in the next life is so much more important than this life. If we live our life in such a way and we race in such a way to win, the rewards of the next are just amazing. And what you're doing in this life is preparing for the next life. So what you do today, what you do tomorrow, will affect what, what happens in eternity. And who goes with you to eternity? If you withhold, you'll take very few people. And there might not be much left of you when you get there. Because you've got no character, no backbone, no strength, no determination, no faith, or very little. You just got there by the faith that Jesus gave you right at the beginning to receive him. But maybe, and I think as a church, I think we have a church of great faith. And that we're going to take many people to heaven. And when we get there, it'll be, oh, it's new life again. They get all the rewards. God, oh, dear. Another crown. Don't they ever give up? No, they don't. They never gave up. They won the race. And they ran it in such a way that they won. And when they get there, we'll all be on those platforms. Eh. And we'll have something in our hands. And when we meet Jesus face to face, we'll have crowns. We'll have rewards. The nearest I could describe it perhaps as medals. And then we can present them and lay them down and say, this Lord is what you achieved in me. Because I couldn't achieve anything. And we can be proud and we can receive the honor that is due because we ran the race and we ran it in such a way that when it was tested by fire, we won. And I want New Life Church to be right up the front there winning that race, winning all the crowns. Let's be that great church that it talks about in Revelations, the church of love, that walked in love, walked in grace, had strong relationships, strong family. Amen? Let's get Rebecca up.